I own this on Blu-ray and forgot to bring it for the thumbnail. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Oliver and Company. Oliver and Company is a 1988 theatrical release and it is directed by George Scribner, who is best known for Heavy Metal, The Black Cauldron, and The Lion King in this. Supervising animators include Ruben A. Aquino, Hendel Butoy, Mike Gabriel, Mark Henn, Glenn Keane, and Doug Crone. Hendel Butoy and Glenn Keane I've covered in previous videos. They will be listed and linked in the description. The rest of them are all best known for their Disney work. Mulan, Atlantis, Lion King. Etc. The film was edited by Mark A. Hester and James Melton. Mark A. Hester is best known for Aladdin, Dinosaur, and the How to Train Your Dragon series. James Melton I covered in a previous video, Winnie the Pooh. The link will be in the description. The music is by J.A.C. Redford and I covered him in the video about Save the Dog. The link will be in the description. The film was written by Jim Cox, Tim Disney, and James Mangold. Jim Cox is best known for his Disney work, The Rescuers Down Under, Beauty and the Beast, this. Tim Disney is best known for American Violet, A Question of Faith, Southbound, and this. And James Mangold I covered in the video about the Deacon Street Deer, the link will be in the description. Oliver and Company is based on a book called Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens, released in 1839. Shall we compare? Oliver is born into a life of poverty. His mother dies during childbirth. He is raised at the baby farm and put to work when he's nine. He is forced to ask for more gruel, which gives birth to the famous line, Please, sir, I want some more. Oliver is almost sent away with a chimney sweep, but a kind magistrate stops it from happening. Mr. Sowerby, the undertaker, takes Oliver in. Oliver is bullied, and when he stands up for himself, he's beaten multiple times. Why should I worry? Why should I care? Oliver escapes London. He meets artful Dodger and Charlie Bates. They give him a free meal and take him to Fagin's gang. Oliver believes they make wallets and handkerchiefs, but learns quickly that they just pickpocket. Dodger and Bates steal from Mr. Brownlow, who believes Oliver did it. Mr. Brownlow has a change of heart and decides to take Oliver home with him. Oliver faints. Oliver blossoms with Mr. Brownlow and is sent to purchase some books when he's kidnapped by Nancy and Bill. Fagin and his gang strip Oliver of his nice new clothes and the money he had from Mr. Brownlow. Oliver tries to flee, but is caught. Nancy stops him from being beaten. The gang forces Oliver to assist in a robbery. Oliver is shot by the family and left behind by the others. The family decides to take care of him. That is such a beautifully nice thing to do. Wow. Mysterious Monks teams up with Fagin to ensure Oliver never learns of their relation. Monks questions the baby farm people about Oliver and then takes the locket and ring left to him by his mother and throws them in the river. Nancy overhears everything Monks did. Mr. Brownlow runs back into Oliver and takes him to meet Rose. Nancy makes plans to tell Mr. Brownlow and Rose everything about Oliver, but is stopped by her abusive lover. A boy named Noah joins Fagin's gang and is told to tail Nancy. Fagin tells Sykes, Nancy's abusive lover, what she's been up to, and he beats her to death. He flees London but returns to steal some money. When he tries to steal the money, he accidentally hangs himself. That was a lot right there. Like, whoa. Mr. Brownlow meets Monks and reveals that he knows the truth that him and Oliver are half-brothers. Their father had fallen in love with Oliver's mother but had to leave for Rome to help a dying friend and then died himself. Mr. Brownlow had noticed their similarities. Monks wanted to destroy Oliver to ensure he got the entire inheritance. Monks, the Bumbles, Mr. Brownlow, and Oliver all meet back in his hometown. Oliver gives half of his inheritance to Monks for a second chance. Monks moves to the new world, doesn't change, and dies. Fagin is arrested and condemned to the gallows. The Bumbles lose their positions, Noah becomes an informer, Bates becomes honest, Rose turns out to be Oliver's aunt, and Oliver lives with Mr. Brownlow, who adopts him. The end. Obviously, there are some major differences between this book and the film. First and foremost, I think it goes without saying, the book is about real life people, and the movie is about a cat and some dogs, and some real life people. <laughs> obviously, the biggest difference. Other differences, obviously, we don't cover everything. No one's beaten to death. Jenny kind of gets kidnapped as well instead of just Oliver and she's held for ransom. Sykes is really awful. Fagin is just a down and out guy who's making some terrible choices but then in the end really makes the smart choices. And all the D Dodger is actually like really lovely. He's a criminal-ish but he has a soft spot for Oliver. Like it's very very different but the bones of it are there. Karma's a B is basically the bones of it. 13 names. I've done it once and my first take was actually pretty good, but I wanted to do it better. So let's see how I do, okay? The film stars Joey Lawrence, Natalie Gregory, Billy Joel, Cheech Marin, Richard Mulligan, Roscoe Lee Brown, Cheryl Lee Ralph, Dom DeLucy, Bette Midler, Tareen Black, Carl Weintraub, Robert Loggia, and William Glover. Joey Lawrence plays Oliver and is best known for Blossom, Brotherly Love, Melissa and Joey, and this. 
Natalie Gregory plays Jenny, and I covered her in the video about Spot Marks the X. The link will be in the description. Billy Joel plays Dodger, and he's best known for Game Night, A League of Their Own, The Wolf of Wall Street, and this. Cheech Marin plays Tito, and is best known for Born in East LA, Tin Cup, Up in Smoke, and From Dusk Till Dawn. Richard Mulligan plays Einstein, and he's best known for Soap, Little Big Man, Empty Nest, and this. Roscoe Lee Brown plays Francis, and he's best known for The Cowboys, Logan's Run, Treasure Planet, and this. Cheryl Lee Ralph plays Rita, and she's best known for Sister Act 2 back in The Habit, Moesha, The Flintstones, and this. Dom DeLucy plays Fagan, and he's best known for The Secret of Nim, Blazing Saddles, The Cannonball Run, and Fatso. Bette Midler plays Georgette, and she's best known for The First Wives Club, Hocus Pocus, The Rose, and Beaches. Tareen Black plays Roscoe, and he's best known for Deep Star Six, Hill Street Blues, Rocky Two, and this. Carl Weintraub plays DeSoto, and he's best known for Air Force One, Beverly Hills Cop, Executive Suite, and this. Robert Lagia plays Sykes, and he's best known for Big, Independence Day, Lost Highway, and Scarface. William Glover plays Winston, and he's best known for To Be or Not To Be, Bring Him Back Alive, CBS Summer Playhouse, and this. This was the first animated feature to be under Michael Eisner and Jeffrey Katzenberg. Right after The Black Cauldron, they both held a meeting called The Gong Show, where they allowed animators come and pitch any film idea they had. Famous pitches include Ron Clements and John Musker pitching The Little Mermaid and Treasure Planet. Pete Young pitched Oliver Twist with dogs. The film was intended to be much darker. The original opening, opening had Dobermans killing Oliver's parents. They toyed with a lot of different ideas, such as Fagin stealing a rare panda, or Fagin even holding Oliver for ransom because he was a rare Asian cat. Scribner really wanted it to be, Scribner, Scribner, George, the director, wanted it to be street smarts instead of like smart smart. He went out and took pictures of actual New York streets to set the stage. He was co-directing with Richard Rich until Richard Rich was fired and everybody was cast based on their ability to bring the characters to life. Billy Joel, Barry Manilow, and Huey Lewis all wrote a song for the film. Huey Lewis wrecked that opening number. Can we talk about how sad that opening is? And it's all because he, it's not all because Huey Lewis sings the opening song, but he does a really good job. And it is the first animated feature to have real, actual, real life product placement. The film was released on November 18th in 1988. That's Mickey's anniversary, his birthday. How exciting is that? And it opened up against The Land Before Time. The Land Before Time outgrossed Oliver and Company for the first weekend, but Oliver and Company outgrossed The Land Before Time overall at $53 million, has a 50% on Rotten Tomatoes, and it got pretty negative reviews. People thought the plot was dodgy and it wasn't living up to Disney standards. There was a little bit of bonus features on the Blu-ray I have that I forgot to bring, like I mentioned. Uh, it was a tiny little making of Oliver and Company and they talk about the all-star cast and a little, there's a little bit of like behind the scenes pictures and the animations and it was, it was cute. I loved this movie when I was young and I haven't seen it since then. I just recently bought it on Blu-ray for this specifically and I thought I forgot a lot of it and then the second I started watching it, it was like everything came flooding back to me. It was a big nostalgia trip. So amazing. The Twin Towers are drawn in the skyline and that was like a little, ooh, okay. And then Oliver doesn't speak until 10 minutes into the movie, which is also just so good. We love telling the story visually and he doesn't even speak until 10 minutes into the film. I cried when Oliver cuddled up to Dodger gets me every time and I actually shed tears. That's how much this movie gets to me. I think the voice acting in this film is extraordinary, specifically for me, Natalie Gregory as Jenny does an amazing job, especially through this last time of me watching. She's just so adorable and she captures that like, oh my God, the little girl really misses her cat and she's really sad or really scared or whatever it needs to be. She really captures that, but at the same time, Fagin is so good, Dom DeLuise, DeLucy, and the guy who plays Sykes, Robert Lagia, like they're all so, so good. Cheech Marin, obviously, Tito sings Hi Ho, which is a fun little callback to Snow White. Like, I love when Disney's self-aware. I didn't find any hidden Mickeys, but I'm sure there are some but I wasn't really looking. I was really into the story and I just really, really, really love this movie. That's everything I have for Oliver and Company. I loved this movie as a kid and to watch it now as an adult for the first time in easily like 15 years, it was so awesome and such a great experience. I think I'm gonna give it like an eight cats out of 10. Our total movie count is, our cry count is. <laughs> 
Parent That's All is still the same. If you want to keep up with the movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter. You'll find out what movie I'm watching when I put up videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Until next time, comment, subscribe, and I'm sure you are, so you do, and don't be psychs about it. Oh my gosh, the celebration starts next week. Holy heck next. If you haven't asked me questions for the Q&A, you better diddly dang do that. Because if I haven't already filmed it, I'm about to. And it, it goes up very soon. Celebration starts next Friday. I'm so hype. I am the hypest. Wow, okay, I'm never doing that again, but okay. <laughs>